Hello, welcome to Rambly Electric and today it's a little bit different because I'm going to be talking about a new gadget that I've got for my EV uh, but of course you can get this gadget actually for any car, not just electric ones and that is a dash cam. It's the first dash cam that I've owned so let's do a YouTube thing. Let's unbox it. <laughs> Okay, we're going to do the unboxing thing, but we will look at it in the car as well in this video. Let's have a look at all the gadgets, all the bits that I've got. So, I've got, of course, the main event. This is the Nextbase 622GW camera. That's the first bit we've got. I have also got here a rear view camera as well, which we'll be connecting in. Uh, I have a micro SD card, which we'll be putting in the camera and I have a soft carry case. Don't know why I've got that, but I got it anyway, came in the kit. And this, a bunch of cables, because this is a hard wire kit, which means instead of plugging the camera into the 12 volt port in the car, socket in the car, I will be uh, having this hard wired into the vehicle, which makes it just a little bit slicker. It means when you turn the ignition on, the camera comes to life. When you turn it off, it goes to sleep, which is what you want. So first of all, we're going to unbox, let's unbox the rear view camera first of all. And now this rear camera is I believe 1080p. The main camera will also do 1080p, but it will do 4K as well. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so we have the box, we have an instruction manual here as well. And we have the camera and this is quite, small, which is quite good because this is going into the, the back of the car, into the rear of the car, you kind of don't really want it to be to be big. So I believe, there we are, sort of kind of magnetic thing on it there for it to connect onto, uh, which, there we go. And then it's got a, a cable, a short cable, and then it has got a very long cable. This I believe is six meters long and will enable uh, the camera to be connected in from the rear of the car all the way to the main camera in the front. So there we are, that's that. It's got a load of gizmos in here. What's in here? So this is, well, it's got 3M tape, as you can see on there, but it has does come with a spare one as well, in case I suppose you want to move it and put it into a different vehicle at, in a few, at a future date. It's also got some wipes. Oh, this is for actually cleaning I think the screen before you put it on because it says on here wipe one sc professional screen cleaning paper dry too isn't it? it's like a screen cleaner isn't it that you get for your monitor I suppose and a little cleaning cloth thing in the back I suppose to make sure it's completely clean before you stick this on the window the installation of this quite simple on the camera itself because it literally just sticks on the window and that's it this is the hard bit because this you've got to run from the rear of your car all the way to the front I must point out at this, uh, at this juncture that I will not be installing this myself, uh, mainly because I've got the rear camera and I want it to be really slick and done well. I'm getting a professional in to fit it. I could do it myself probably, but I just know that I won't do as good a job and I need this to go in really well for the simple reason that my EV is so quiet that if I go wrong and I don't do something correctly and I have a rattle, that will annoy me massively. So my hope is that the professionals will know what they're doing and will uh, be able to install it without generating any rattles. Rear camera, that's good. Let's quickly have a look at the, the soft carry case because it's not, probably not something that I'm gonna use. I think they give you this so that if you take the camera out of the car, you, or you might, you might wanna move it between cars, I suppose, and this will keep it, keep it clean and safe and undamaged, I guess. So there we are, it's just a very simple bit of Velcro, very simple, yeah, kind of cheapy sort of case, really. I don't know whether I will use that, probably not. Uh, but it came in the kit, so I'm not knocking it. Right, that's that, quickly moving on. Uh, let's have a look next at the main event, shall we? Let's have a look at the main event. This is the next base, it's a 622GW dash cam, and this one does do 4K, but you can do 1080p, but at a faster frame rate. And what that means is that if you uh, are recording 1080p at a faster frame rate, you could slow it down and get a lot of detail. 
if you need that kind of thing. Only you can decide what sort of driving you do and what sort of incidents you're likely to want to record. So um, obviously 4K will give you more detail, but at a slower frame rate, 30 frames per second, I think. Got a quick start guide. But here is the camera. And let's just take that out of the, it doesn't look too big. I was a bit worried it was gonna be really gigantic. Um, but it's not too bad, actually. I mean, yes, it's not tiny, and there are definitely smaller dash cams on the market. There's a little thin one that somebody was uh, put on their YouTube channel recently that I thought, oh, that's quite neat. Um, but this, this is, yeah, it's a bit, it's, it's quite weighty as well. It's weighty, but in a, in a reassuring kind of way. So there we are, there is, there is the camera. And it's got the little protections on the front, which I'm not going to remove. So it says on the back, this dash cam has a touch screen charged for two hours using supplied USB cable before use. Uh, okay. So I will do that. So presumably in here, there is a USB lead. Oh, there's a load of stuff in here. Goodness, what's all this lot? So we have, that is the mount for the, for the dash cam. So that's quite a meaty mount. Look at this, look at that. That's quite, that's quite chunky. That's where the camera will be going on and it will stick on. Oh, it's already, yeah. That will go on, that will go on there. That is a, that is strong. That's a strong magnet. Whoa. Okay, that's strong. But I'd hope it would be, wouldn't you? Uh, and what else have we got in here? This is, oh, that is, so if you were going to run this off the 12 volt, what we used to call the cigarette lighter. We don't these days, it's not PC to do that. The 12 volt socket, I think it might be more accurately called these days. So uh, there we go, uh, that's that. And if, uh, if you wanna just run it off that, then you can just plug it in, there's the big 12 volt there. I won't be using that. And particularly in an EV, it's just open on the floor in the driver's side. There, aren't, there isn't a big sort of, you know, center console. There is a center console, but it doesn't run all the way to the front of the car. So there's nowhere really to run this cable. So that's why I want to run it into the, uh, 12, into the fuse box so that it will just be all nice and seamless. At least that's what I'm hoping. Uh, so what else have we got? Oh, this is a little gizmo for about putting your cables in and hiding them away. Uh, you've got a spare 3M mount in case you want to move it into another vehicle. So a bit like the, the other one. Oh, there's the USB cable. So that's not, I was expecting it maybe to be USB-C. It's not, that's what I think they would call a micro USB. So it's, uh, is that in focus? You can see that's, that's a bit old fashioned really in this day and age. And then similarly, as we had in the rear facing camera, you've got these kind of wipe things to put on the windscreen and, and clean everything up before you put the camera in position. Next up, we have this. This is a micro, uh, micro SD card. And I decided to get one actually from Nextbase themselves. But you could use any micro SD card, of course you could. This is a 256 gig card, so it's quite big. And I think for me, that's actually going to record way more footage than I need for any single journey. I think, again, I'm gonna keep this in the packet because the actual micro SD card is tiny and I don't wanna lose it. Oh yeah, there's a little slot on the side of the camera and then the, the SD card, the micro SD card just pushes into there. Uh, and here we have the uh, hardwire installation kit. Again, I'm not going to take this out of the packet uh, because I'll leave it for the, uh, for the professional to use tomorrow. But basically there's a very long cable and there's all the bits in here that you can see that will enable you to uh, in, put the camera in and hardwire it into the fuse box of the vehicle. So I'm gonna look at the quick start guide. There's a QR code on the front, which will enable, take you to videos to watch apparently for setting up. Uh, it's telling you to it's telling you how to, how, to, how to put it into your car really, but I mean, I don't really wanna do any of that um, at this precise moment because I'm having it installed. So I'm not gonna worry about any of that because they know what they're doing. I'm paying them the big bucks to do it. Although actually it's not that expensive to get it professionally installed. It's got Alexa built in, won't be using that. 
Uh, okay, so it didn't tell me, it doesn't tell me how to charge it up. So just says charge for you, charge for two hours. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna unravel this cable here, the micro USB cable, and which is fairly, you know, we're all very familiar with these sort of things, aren't we, let's be honest. Let's plug it in like that. And then I'm gonna plug it in. I've got a USB plug thing in the back of my cabinet there. I'm gonna plug that in and charge it up for two hours. Okay, I've just plugged it in to do the two hour charge thing and it has actually turned on. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take this sticker off the front of the screen, the protector, um, and just follow the instructions on here. So it's got on here, uh, okay. So, oh, English UK, that's good, that's me. Please use the following menus to adjust your dash cam settings for country and speed units. Let's do that then. These settings will establish your time zone and daylight savings time, okay. Right, so, oh, Europe, but it's got the UK flag as well. So let's not get started on Brexit. Uh, other, so select country, UK and Ireland, yep. Miles per hour, yep. Automatically set the date and time when so, okay. To enable Alexa, emergency SOS and more, your desk cam needs to be linked to your phone. And so you can see on the screen, it's got connect, oh, dash cam, not connected. So it's got connect dash cam. So I'm gonna tap the button, connect dash cam. Oh, there we are. So it's come up on the screen, select your dash cam below to begin. 622GW, that's good, so I'm gonna tap that. Select an accessory. Okay. Oh, please wait for your dash cam to appear in this list. This can take up to two minutes. Oh, there it is, already. So I'm gonna tap that. So Bluetooth pairing, it's doing a pairing, the little code, so that's good. And app not installed. The accessory next place uses an app you do not have installed. Oh. Okay, what does that mean then? Uh, what? Uses an app, unless they mean that Alexa thing, because I'm not interested in that. So let's go back to your dash cam, already has the latest firmware version installed, dash cam connected. Yeah, it's probably the, oh, hello. It's got something on the screen now. How cool is that? So it is actually showing something on the screen it's got the date on there, it's 1st of January 2020, which isn't right. But, um, I, it, well, I think it said it would update, didn't it? It said it would update when it's connected to something. So that's okay. So uh, there, okay. So that's on the app, let's tap on dash cam. Dash cam does not contain an SD card. They're right, it doesn't actually. The dash cam doesn't contain an SD card. So maybe I should put the SD card in after all, because I think you've got to format it. Okay, I've finally got into the into it so I can put the the card in which I'm going to try oh hello right so it's actually recording at the moment so and I can see it on the app uh, so it is actually recording so I don't necessarily want it to record so I don't know if I can press that and stop it oh yeah I've stopped it now Okay, so that's quite good. That means that the card must already be formatted, so I don't need to format it. So let's go into the settings um, and video settings and resolution. So you can you can mess about then with all the, lots of stuff on here. So we've got resolution, 4K, 30 frames per second. And you could have 1440p at 60 frames per second. Uh, 1440p at 30 frames per second and 1080p at 120 frames per second. So that's where you could really slow things down, get a lot of detail that we were talking about earlier. 1080p at 60 frames per second. If you haven't got much room on your card, that would be quite good to have. Or even 30 frames per second, you've got all sorts on here. I'm gonna leave it as 4K, 30 frames per second. Um, exposure, I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, video length, oh, you can set how long each video is. Um, I'm going to up that to three minutes. I'm going to put three minutes, I think, per video. Uh, you've then got audio on or off. Audio on. Okay. Oh, hello. My phone's ringing. 
So let's swipe across and see what else we've got on here. So we've got a timestamp, which is on, so we'll show you the timestamp, that's okay. Speed stamp, now I read online that some people think that the speed that this is recording is not accurate and to turn it off, but I'm gonna leave it on for now because I want to see whether that's true or not. GPS stamp, that is on. Model stamp, do we need that on? I mean, do we really need to know the model stamp? No, I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, okay, let's go on. Dual files. Uh, Oh, okay, let's go on to that. Dual files on, I don't know what that is. Okay, time lapse. Oh, that's to record a time lapse as you're going. Might be handy for vlogging. Oh, you can put your number plate in if you want to put on the, on the little caption at the bottom of the picture. G sensor. Yep, don't know what that is. And image stabilization is off and extreme weather is off. I'm gonna to have to look into these and see what all of these things do. I don't honestly know is the answer to that question. So I'm gonna to have to look into that. Oh, what was that one? Driver assistance, I didn't see that. Driver assistance. Uh, oh, reversing camera. So you can use the rear cam as a reversing camera. That's handy. But I've got a reversing camera in my car, so I don't need that. Emergency SA, SOS. Not enabled, so you use, oh, you've got to set that up in the app. You've got what three words are built in as well. So that's quite good. What three words might be handy to turn that on. We'll see. Uh, okay, setup. Oh, goodness, screensaver. Oh, you've got all sorts of stuff in here. Um, time and day and screen, the speed unit, all of this stuff. Oh, goodness, there's all sorts of things going on in here. Parking mode, I'm not going to bother with. That is off anyway. Um, you can, if you want, have the camera set up so that it will be attached to a permanent fused connection. And then if you're bumped in the car park, the camera can, can record. But I have heard that that can drain your battery. So I've got that switched off. Anyway, I'm gonna, it says to charge it up for two hours. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to turn it off. I've pushed the off on button. Do you have to hold it? I'll push and hold the button. Is it going to turn off? Oh, there we are. Presumably that's it turning off. Right, so I'm going to leave that recording for a couple of hours uh, as they suggest to do. So the dash cam, it has been installed and it's quite a neat job actually. So I'm okay. I was a little bit stressed. <laughs> EVs are so quiet that I was genuinely worried that it gets pulled around apart you know, a bit then uh, is it gonna you know, develop a squeak or a rattle or something? I was a little bit worried about that. But uh, anyway, it's in and I have been out for a couple of drives with it and it, I can't hear anything, so that's a good sign. So that's good. Oh, you worry about silly things, don't you? So it's quite neat. It's stuck here behind the wing mirror and uh, you can, of course, have it positioned really wherever you want. We want it kind of tucked away a bit, really. So that's behind the wing. So from the driver's seat, I actually can't see it at all. So that's quite good, it's not a distraction. And it comes on automatically when I turn the car on. So if I push the button now, then you'll see that, you can probably hear it, The uh, it will come on and start recording. So that's quite good. And then when you turn the car off, it will stop recording automatically. So you haven't really got to think about it. So that's quite good, isn't it? Now, what about the rear view camera? Well, when I came to discuss the installation with the engineer, uh, we were looking in the back of the car and he'd spoken to a colleague, so he'd never installed one in, a, in an Aria before, but one of his colleagues had. And you can see here, there's a bit of plastic at the back. And he said that the cable for the rear camera would poke out of this bit of plastic. And unfortunately, that bit of plastic then kind of protrudes a bit. And he said in the, his colleague's experience, it would fall off. And I didn't really like the sound of that, bearing in mind what I said about squeaks and rattles. So we actually decided not to install it. And I've initiated a returns request with next base for just the rear camera. Now, so far that process is, seems to be quite smooth because I requested it and I it came up as a free return through Royal Mail. So they're actually coming to my house to pick it up with that and I haven't got to pay anything. So I'm gonna reserve judgment completely on, on praising next base because they've yet to give me the money back <laughs> for that camera. So we will see, as soon as they do, if it does go through and they give me the money back, I will be very pleased 
with with what's happened there it's a bit of a shame not to have the rear view camera recording but you know i didn't the the installation just sounded no i didn't want to go down that route okay so let's now look at the app and uh it's connected so that's a good start i've heard some things about the app being a bit finicky with connecting to the camera but you know i'll see it as i say it as i see it rather the footage that you saw earlier in this video was i got off the camera by just ejecting the micro sd card and putting it in my computer and that's by far the easiest way to get it off there let's face it uh, but let's go in the app and it says please wait oh hello it wants to join okay so it's waiting to connect i can see that it's actually got videos appearing so that's quite good but is it actually going to establish a connection it's taking its time to establish a connection and this is the sort of thing that i have heard when i sort of oh hello it has appeared now so if i scroll down um it should give us so there's a trip that i took this morning so let's tap on that Okay, the dash cam has stopped recording okay so oh that's oh that's good so it's showing me driving along the road um but actually there is audio as well which i'm going to just disable but it's actually showing where i'm driving on the map that's cool i mean that's that's actually that's actually really quite cool i wasn't expecting that i was expecting to see the footage i wasn't expecting to see it actually plotted on a map that's amazing Look at that. So I'm driving, and as you can see, the quality is excellent, and it is showing where I am driving. I'm driving in the New Forest there, and it is showing where I'm driving. That's really good. I'm quite impressed with that. So if I press that, that presumably will will take it full screen, which it has done. Um, and playing over Wi-Fi, it's perhaps not the high quality that you saw earlier, but it's perfectly decent. So that's very, very, very impressive. I am suitably impressed with that. So I'm going to stop that, and then I'm going. To, oh, now there's a car just appearing there. I'm just going to blow that back up again, and we'll see. Can I zoom in and see the number plate? Just about, but I know. I think this might be playing back a slightly low res version, and it will play a higher res version. Certainly, the cop footage that I copied off the uh, SD card, micro SD card, was higher quality than this. But this is perfectly good for just watching something back. So my experience of the app so far is fine. <laughs> So the bit of video that you've just been watching, I recorded a month ago and I thought what I would do is to have the dash cam in my car for a few weeks so I could see how well it does, how well does it record and function really and I'm pleased to say that after this period of time, after the four weeks, it's all going rather well. I get in the car, I turn the car on. I can hear the camera fire up because it plays a little jingle and I haven't turned that off. I don't even know if you can because at least it tells me audibly that it has come on and it is working. It then records as I'm driving, as it is doing right now. And then when I stop the car and I turn it off and I get out, it stops recording. And that's just how I like it. I don't want to have to think about it. I don't want to have to get in the car and push a button in order to get it to record because I'm inherently lazy and I really don't want that hassle frankly so it has ticked that box the other thing I like about it is that it is 4k and the quality of the recordings is really good night and day although I haven't done an awful lot of driving in the dark this time of year it gets dark quite late so most of my driving is in daylight but from what I've seen of the night time it, it's okay and with it being 4K, it's actually really clear. You can make out number plates, you can make out um, road signs and uh, street names, and it, it's pretty good, actually. So again, to tick that box, that's very good. Uh, now, the question now is, is this the dash cam that you should buy? That's the question you're probably asking now, isn't it? And I can't answer that question because this is the very first dash cam I have ever owned. So I've got no idea how it... Uh, stacks up against the competition frankly and uh, so other dash cams may be better all i can do is tell you what this one is like and this one is doing the job it's perfectly fine i could have saved a few quid 
maybe by getting a dash cam that only did 1080p instead of 4k but i think really on balance i'm pleased that i got one that does 4k because that extra clarity i think that's quite important in 2023 i think we really should be using dash cams that have that level of quality but you know your mileage may vary and you may be wondering what happened when i returned the camera the rear camera to next base uh, now they say in their blurb that if you've opened something then they won't give you your money back and of course i opened it to unbox it but other than that i haven't touched it and i was honest with them i said you know i've opened it but i haven't done anything with it and they didn't argue they just well, i sent it back to them they paid for the return and they gave me my money back so uh, again that's quite good that's a good experience of the next base customer service so uh, i've got no complaints there either is it a shame that i haven't got the rear camera well yes it probably is i would have liked to have had it but on balance for me as i said earlier in the video frankly i didn't want to take the risk this ev is quiet it's not quiet at the moment because it's a warm day and the blowers are on and i've got a dog cake crate in the back that's rattling but on the whole <laughs> this is a quiet car and so i didn't really want to risk bits of plastic dropping off as the next base engineer uh, thought might happen oh i must just mention about the app uh, I have worked out that if I, the car is off and I'm trying to use the app, then the camera turns itself off because it's hardwired and it detects that the car's off, so it just shuts down, even if I'm connected to it wirelessly. So I've worked out that I need to have the car on if I want to communicate with the camera and take things off and do things with the app, which is okay, actually. That's not a problem because this is an EV, so having it switched on is kind of irrelevant. But if you have an, an ICE car, uh, petrol or diesel you may be thinking that that could be a bit of a pain if you've got to sit there with the engine running while you're talking to the camera but you may not care i don't know but i still maintain the easiest way to get footage off is to push the button take the S micro sd card out and stick it in your computer one other thing i have noticed is that the uh, the, the it can protect images so if you have uh, an incident when you're out and about in your car uh, there's a button on the front of the dash cam if you press it it protects that that particular bit of video so it won't be erased and that's good because you, you know you don't want that to get overwritten particularly if you've got a small sd card a small um, micro uh, sd card now uh, for some reason the the my uh, camera is protecting a lot of the footage that it takes and i don't know why that is because i haven't pushed the button ever i've never pushed it and yet there's a load of uh, footage on the camera that is protected so i mean it's easy to sort out i just format the card but why it's doing it at this juncture i have absolutely no idea uh, so that's a little thing but not a major one Anyway, as I was saying, leave your comments below. I will do my best to answer any questions. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're new here, hit subscribe because you're very welcome to join in all the fun. And I will see you for another video really soon.